Axe Survival Evolved did a little stream tonight. They called it somewhat of a live community crunch and they did some reveals. And they also had a lengthy interview with the composer of the art music, Gareth Coker. And I edited all parts together so you can listen to what Gareth has to say about ARC, ARC 2 and ARC the animated series. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think, I think we're what, 75% done with the, uh, the music for the, for the show. I think it's okay to say that. And like where I started on episode one, where I like honestly didn't really know what I was doing. And now I kind of do. Um, the hardest thing is taking music that started in a game and in a game we just have loops and it, the music can just start and stop when, whenever we want it to adapting that material for an animated series where everything the timing i have to work with the timing that is given to me so for example we've got some really like popular pieces in uh in the game whether it's uh you know whether it's broodmother or uh uh, or some, some of the other uh, tracks from the island, which are really popular. And it's like, I cannot take them and put them exactly the same in the TV show because the TV show doesn't allow me to do that because everything's like timed out in a very specific way. So honestly, like the biggest challenge has been like adapting the original arc material and making it work for the TV show. Um, at the beginning, of arc tv show like that was the hardest thing for me to to do now i'm pretty comfortable with it um because like i have more experience and i think i've written i think we're up to five hours now for for music and by the time we've done it will be, be close to seven Gareth yeah. coker well i think the the coolest thing about the tv show if you know, everyone who's watching has obviously played arc arc has a ton of combat music like so much combat music and while we do have that in the show this was the best chance that i've had to really explore um like you guys said the the emotional side of arc and if you've you know i think you've publicized the the cast list and the characters right there's a whole bunch of different characters they all need themes and these themes are not necessarily present in the game soundtrack and there's a chance to like really stretch them out and develop them in the in the TV show. But equally, it's also been very cool to cross reference characters from the show, their themes from the game and then put them in the show. Rockwell being my my favorite example. Um, you know, we we um, obviously, obviously Rockwell was very present in uh, the Genesis 2 expansion. Um, but Rockwell is also a character in the t the TV show, and so just being able to like cross reference things and uh, stretch out themes and develop melodies in a way I haven't been able to before, um, and have the 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 time to do it in the show. Like normally with a game, I'm writing like two or three minute long tracks. With some of the some of these tracks are like really long and drawn out, like four to five minutes, and it gives me a chance to really stretch my legs musically um but also at the same time matching always matching the emotion that i want the viewer to feel when they're watching the show if you've played the other games i've worked on that's kind of my thing uh like i mean frankly it should be every composer's thing like yeah. all composers should be like not just using one theme um this show give because there's so many different characters it gives a lot of opportunities to combine different character themes and like kind of have them play off each other and that helps also develop the relationships in the show too i, I think what we'll do um probably for the, the the soundtrack is i mean i don't know yet i haven't really thought about it too much because i'm still still writing the music for the show but um we'll probably do like a like a best of but we'll also doing uh one releasing literally all the music for for every episode each time if you look at lord of the rings uh, the new tv show they're releasing episode one episode two separate soundtracks so you'll have everything uh and there is there is a lot of music um and i i will say this and I, i'm very grateful to the support from the team for this uh no expense has been spared on the production of the music so it it is uh in my opinion pretty pretty high quality um we've gone back to we've re literally are recording in the same place where we recorded the arc one uh game soundtrack 
Um, so I'm very, very uh, experienced with that group now. Um, and they've really done an unbelievable job bringing, uh, bringing the music to life. And yeah, I just hope people, I just hope people like it because uh, it is definitely expanding uh, the art musical landscape for sure. I just love having story sequences to write for, like, uh, and especially coming back to them uh, after having done uh, the TV show and, you know, really being comfortable working with with dialogue. We kind of started doing this really um, with uh, especially the the closing cutscenes of, of Genesis 2, which is like some, some really like that's some of my favorite stuff that we've ever done in the game. And we're just like kind of building on that um, with these with these story moments uh, for, for Ark. Um, but also, uh, and I know they played it about 20, 20 minutes ago, um, uh, the finally being able to do the Scorched Earth Ascension music, which like, I wasn't even sure I still had the Scorched Earth project files on my, on my computer because I, I like wrote that in 20, I can't even remember when it was, like 2017 or something. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fun to revisit that. They, they, uh, I, I think they asked this last time, but there's, but, there's pro but like, it's still pretty easy. I think, I think, um, I think Journey's End, uh, just because it's like, it combines, uh, the emotional part of Ark, uh, but it also plays the theme in a really epic way. Um, and also in the game, I love like how it flows, you know, right through from the final cutscenes all through that final cinematic and then into Journey's End. Like that's, that that stuff I live for, like how it's not just doing music for one scene, it's how music flows from one scene into the next. That's like that's always the dream. Like when you're when you're writing, it's not it's not always possible to like make things transition so perfectly. Um, but yeah, that whole like last five, ten minutes, whatever it is, uh is yeah, it was really cool to do that last year. So yeah, Journey's End is the the culmination of that. Um but, you know, these themes, it's not like we're saying goodbye to these themes. They, you know, you never know when they might pop up in other parts of the, the arc landscape. Wow. I mean, I, I think if you look at the, um, that really long, uh, the four and a half minute trailer, it kind of, that kind of literally sums up kind of the two aspects, because there's a sense of wonder, like towards the end. Um, but then the prior three minutes or whatever it is, um, is uh, a pretty, pretty long and intense uh, action scene. Um, I'm flashing back to when we recorded that. Um, we we recorded that during the pandemic, which was, which was a very unique challenge. Um, which uh, thankfully now we don't have we we don't have to record in the same way that we did during the pandemic. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of uh, cool to get to to get started on that. Um, and yeah, you guys are keeping me busy between the uh, animated show and uh, and Arc Two. I've done a couple of games where where y y you have to figure out what music plays when in the open world. It's like the most important thing and most games don't get it right. They play the wrong music at the wrong time because it's all, it's all driven by a, a, a system. Um, but um, yeah, like what you're talking about, when you see something wondrous, some wondrous music should play. Um, but if you hear it literally every time, it's the worst thing ever. Um, so either you do it with variations or you just do it the first time. Um, or we could even implement it where if you haven't heard it for a week, I bet you, I bet, I bet there's a way of tracking that because there's all kinds of telemetry you can build into to game music systems. Um, like if you haven't heard a, if you haven't logged in for a week, then it just kind of resets uh, all of the all of the musical uh, parameters that decide when something plays. That, you actually bring up a really good point because I actually think for these big games we spend a lot of time in, and, and a couple of game developers are actually starting to do this now. Um, if you're spending thousands of hours in a game, which most we obviously hope most people are, um, you should be able to customize the experience however you want. Because I'm sure there are going to be, I, I know for sure that there are some people who who play, I, I don't want any music at all. I want the ultimate survival experience of music will never, ever play. And that's, you know, that's fine because you can just turn the music off. But equally, there's some people who probably want more music. Um, like I know in the most recent Assassin's Creed game, they had uh, a music slider, which actually it's not volume. Say, it's you a, like you have a verbos little music amount of music verbosity and slider. a lot. I mean, I, yeah, I started on this, I mean, pretty much um, the the first trailer for Ark came out in 2015, which was three months after uh, Ori and the Blind Forest came out. So that was a, that was a pretty good three months for me. Um, so, and, and obviously they're two completely different games. Um, but back then, like, I, I like to say that I didn't really know what I was doing, even though it seems like it. Uh, now I feel like comfortable. 
Um, it's always interesting, like seeing how people react to, especially the main theme, because people obviously love the main theme because they've heard it for the longest amount of time. Um, and I think one of the coolest things is just like going through all of the different expansion packs and hearing how the music has developed for, for ARC, starting from the island, Watched Earth, Aberration, Extinction, and the two Genesis uh, expansion packs. Um, then where it's gone even further into the, the TV series. And I remember one thing you said at the beginning uh, of, the, of, of when we started doing the TV show. We're like, you're only really allowed to use the main arc theme like once per episode <laughs> because or, it's so or, easy or, to or, rely or on less. It. It's, so powerful. <laughs> be fun. it's one of those things, I, I, call it the, I call it the golden bullet. And I, I had the same thing when I did the second Ori game. I was like, I was determined not to rely on the first game's theme. But right at the end of the second game and in, in the big kind of final cinematic sequence, I'm like, all right, we're going to have the biggest possible version that we've ever had of Ori's main theme. Uh, and it's by far the most popular track on Spotify. I'm, I kind of knew that it was always my intention to do that. But like also because we didn't use it that much, it meant when we did play it, it had the, the most emotional resonance possible. Um, the, the cool thing about working with the arc theme and developing other themes um, over the course of the last seven to eight years is that our fan base has built up an emotional attachment to some of this music, like the amount of times I get messaged about the aberration music, for example, but like even, even just the what themes that we can reuse from the game that, um, and, and play them again in a slightly different matter, a slightly different manner, it means they'll have way more power when we reuse them rather than just like writing a whole bunch of new themes. And we, we talked about this on the show. Whenever we establish a new theme, it's like, okay, we've established it. How can we develop it so it has way more impact two or three or four episodes down the line? Well, I mean, we're going to reach 10 by the looks of things. So uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty exciting. Um, I think uh, for ARC 2, revisiting the... Um, starting to get back into the more uh, primal uh, and primitive nature of the arc music, which is, you know, we, we've kind of touched on it here and there, but it's, especially with, you know, Genesis 2, we went all out sci-fi. Um, and now for, for arc 2, we'll kind of be going in completely the opposite direction. I mean, there's probably going to be almost no synth sounds at all, or very minimal amount, at least compared to what we've done. Um, and that's kind of why I love working on this, because like every new thing that we do is a new challenge for me. Like if I'd been doing music like The Island for eight years, <laughs> it it would be a challenge creatively. But because because each expansion has been themed completely differently, at least for me, like from my perspective, uh, and now like going back into the primitive world for Arc 2, it's like, it's it's going to feel very fresh for me, which is obviously what you want, and I think it's what the, the players want too.